In the next several minutes, I'm going to show you the future of Web3 sign-in. Let's get into it. Now, in all the previous videos, I've mostly talked about user-controlled data. This is application data that, data that is now stored on a user's personal cloud drive, as opposed to being siloed into individual application servers. But let's talk about another aspect of identity. In every case on the web today, we have to sign in to these web applications in order to uh, authenticate in and then also be authorized to uh, gain access to those resources. It could be uh, data or it could be read-write access, et cetera, et cetera. But authentication and authorization are uh, two components of sign-in. So let's talk about uh, Web 2, Web, Web 1, Web 2, and Web 3 sign-in. Web 1 sign-in is centralized. This is a custom username and password for every different web app that you use. The problem with this is that the user has to manage many different usernames. And so to combat this, uh, somebody came along, or some people did, and created Web2 sign-in, which is federated sign-in. And this is where you're able to reuse credentials across multiple applications. So there are identity providers, OIDC identity providers, such as Google, Facebook, and Twitter listed here that um, when I'm trying to sign into a third-party application, it redirects me to Google's authentication servers. I enter my Google credentials into there, and the Google authentication server sends an access token to the third-party server. This access token gives the, it authenticates me into Google, and it also give, it might give that third-party application authorization to maybe use my Google Photos or contacts in Gmail or something like that. Uh, but that's where the authentication and authorization come in. Related to this idea of sign-on is the idea of web sessions. So I've logged into my YouTube account right here, and when I go to different tabs in YouTube, I expect to stay logged in. It would be very strange if we, if I pressed this and pressed this and went to some different tabs and I had to log in every time I did that. So this is an idea of a browser session so that web apps can persist your session data across time and across going into uh, different locations within the application. This is done using something called HTTP cookies and we won't get into the specifics of that but understand that this is something that is lacking right now in uh, the Web3 dApp ecosystem. Many dApps do not have sessions and um, they're kind of stateless. So we connect our wallet to a dApp and uh, we can sign with, uh, to, we can sign transactions in order to submit something on chain. But for the most part, we can't really like load application data or uh, profile information or other metadata like that because we don't have a standard sign-in service. So um, some initiatives are underway to, uh, to improve the sign-in experience. I can give you some examples right now. OpenSea and Mirror, which is a blogging platform, do allow users to sign in. And once you do sign in, um, you sign a message with your with your wallet, your crypto wallet. It is it allows those services to pull up um, information about yourself that you saved before. So it pulls up like some profile information on OpenSea and whether or not you like light or dark mode. But it's just it's starting to improve the experience and starting to add session like capabilities back into these applications, decentralized applications. There's another company called Spruce ID. This is a Web3 company that is integrating Web3 wallet sign-in, um, but into the current OAuth and federated login process right here. So most of the web right now, we're in this federated login. And what Spruce ID is doing is adding a sign-in with Ethereum box down here. So I have my Web3 wallet. And let's actually demo this right now, login.xyz. Uh, I can go down here, sign in with Ethereum, sign in with MetaMask. 
and um, I sign this message. It doesn't require a network fee because it's off chain, and all that the wallet, or sorry, all that the D app is doing is ensuring that my private key signature matches my public key, and it's allowed me to sign in, and I can um, I can vote. I probably already vote, yeah. So I can vote, submit that. <laughs> it's kind of some funny, and then I can sign out, right? And then if I sign back in again it's going to persist my data. It's going to know that I, I selected um, the unicorn. So um, what's happening on the back end is an OIDC.login.xyz. This uh, has become an OAuth or OIDC identity provider similar to um, Google and Facebook and, and Twitter in this case over here. And uh, so this, this, um, this identity provider uh, is going to give an access token to the D app that you are, or, or sorry, Web2 um, application that you're trying to sign into. Essentially, it allows you to uh, use your wallet in order to authenticate into a Web2 application. Also, I should say that Spruce ID has plans to extend this into sessions. So you have a, a, a private key, which is always going to be stored on your device, but a session can be generated by generating an ephemeral key and then delegating certain permissions to that ephemeral key. So you can say that um, allow this key to upload one gigabyte of data to the cloud um, and it expires in seven days or something like that. So you downscope what the ephemeral key is able to sign and validate. And uh, this just allows you to create a session and a better user experience because if you're trying to utilize many different off-chain services right now, um, the process for it right now would be to um, sign a transaction every single time. And this is just a really poor UX. So Spruce ID is solving the Web3 session problem. Now the last thing to talk about is something called Decentralized Key Management Service. This is a mouthful, but it's really improving the UX of Web3. The main problem with Web3 UX right now, in my opinion, is the poor onboarding UX. In order to gain access to a DApp, a user is going to have to create a wallet. They're gonna to have to manually back up their seed phrase. This is both scary and unfamiliar for the user, and it gives the user a lot of responsibility in managing their seed phrase. But these decentralized key management projects right here, Web3 Auth and also Magic Link, completely change it. Basically, it allows users to sign up to create a Web3 wallet by using Web2 OAuth or single sign-on. So essentially, a user can click, like in order to onboard to a D app, a user can just say, sign in with Google. They sign in and authenticate with Google. And, um, and then a wallet, a private key is generated on the back end that is distributed across a node network in the Web3 auth case. And um, when a user, let's say the user logs out or comes, you know, exits out of the browser and then comes back and they sign in again with Google, this node network with, uh, that has distributed their private key reconstructs their private key with using threshold cryptography and, uh, and then basically reloads the, um, the user's crypto wallet. So essentially the user can onboard and sign in to their Web3 wallet just with a Web2 single sign-on um, flow. And this is incredible, and this is a massive improvement over current sign-in, or sorry, current Web3 onboarding solutions. Thank you.